Thank you so much, Hala, um, and thank you to the MIT Salt community for having me. I'm excited to be here um, and talk to you about uh, what little I know um, as a professor, as an activist, as a leader of a nonprofit, um, in terms of how we use our technology and how we really use the imagination of people who are, are set here to be makers, to do good in the world, real, honest, to goodness good, not just to try, but to accomplish. And I think because the work that I do revolves so much around racism in public safety, it may be useful to start with a specific example. Um, and because we're here at the end of this summer of perpetual protest, this summer of a thousand plagues, this summer of cruelty and meanness, um, it may be used, useful to, to think about an example from that period, particularly the, the, the case of Breonna Taylor. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Breonna Taylor was a, a young African-American woman who was in her own home when police served a no-knock warrant um, to investigate potential um, illegal activity. Only they served it on the wrong house. She wasn't involved in anything illegal, but they broke down her door. Um, accounts differ, but 11 eyewitnesses said that they did not identify themselves. Um, her partner, who was there, thought the home was being invaded, shot at the law enforcement. They shot back. The partner who shot was fine, but the woman, Brianna Taylor, was shot and killed. And then, many, many days later, district attorney decided, um, after a grand jury, not to charge the officers with the death of Brianna Taylor, but instead just to indict on wanton endangerment because one of the officers shot and injured a home next door. Now, the city settled with Brianna Taylor's family for a large cash settlement and significant bureaucratic changes inside the police department. So some have asked, well, why is there still protest? Another have asked, why on earth would you imagine there wouldn't be? And I think there is something central to this moment of race and policing, not just now, but historically, which is that there are two different diagnoses of the problem of race and policing. One is that police departments and police officers are noble men and women trying to do the right thing, and there need to be tighter management controls, tighter bureaucratic controls, fewer errors. The other is that there are no errors in this, that in fact, the death of Breonna Taylor, the murder of this woman, the murder of George Floyd, and so many others, that's baked into the calculus of the, of the mission in the first place, that law enforcement is doing what it's intended to do. And so it's that mission that needs a change. So think about that. One diagnosis of the problem is bureaucratic, need for fewer errors. The other is that the mission of the thing needs to change. The settlement in the Breonna Taylor case was entirely bureaucratic. There was no change to the mission. And it therefore could not speak to the people who hold the other theory as gospel. Now that's a conversation that needs to be had nationwide. Which are the things that are wrong with law enforcement? And when I speak, to folks in law enforcement, they are of a mind that it is both and. But the reason I'm saying this to the MIT Solve community is because there are stakes to the diagnosis of the problem. Right? The things I'm going to do to change the mission of law enforcement, it's very different than what I'm gonna to do to change the errors within law enforcement. And as technologists, as people who want to solve problems through the use of, of uh, <clears throat> algorithms, through the use of machinery, through technology, through imagining a different future, it's often tempting to show up and say, the tools at my disposal have never been brought to bear on this problem. I should create the, the boldest vision for what technology can do here that I possibly can. But if you fail to diagnose the problem correctly, what you end up building is a suite of toys instead of tools for a better future. If you misdiagnose the problem of policing as only one thing or the other, if you get that wrong, the set of solutions will be entirely unable to speak to the scope of the problem. Which is why at the beginning of this summer, what I kept telling people was that in the, the case of racism and policing, where I have spent the majority of my adult professional career, the problem is not racism and policing. I'll say it again. In the case of racism and policing, the problem is not racism and policing. That is just a symptom. The deeper problem is the racism that permeates the society. The individuals who use law enforcement as personal racism concierges when they call 911 because they're uncomfortable with someone, and the ways in which law enforcement aligns with powers 
that keep black and Latino folks in their place and polices our gender expression as if that was actually a matter where law had standing. If we don't recognize that policing is part of the broader issue and not the issue in and of itself, we're gonna create tools that are too small to be responsive to the moment. So I exhort all of you to think about spending significant time deep in the subject matter area where you wanna make change because technology by itself will always fail to meet the moment. The technology married with a deeper understanding of what you can do in that space, that's where things get really exciting. The work we do at the Center for Policing Equity, the reason why we're excited about it now, why other folks are excited about it now, it's not just because we're able to use algorithms and software built in collaboration with Google to identify um, and clean police data, to identify errors in it. It's because what we're giving back to communities and law enforcement is a tangible set of next steps, not just racial disparities, but the portion where law enforcement could be responsible and therefore where they can start if they wanna make a difference. It's because we spent the time to understand the subject matter area and the tools are literally that, tools in service of a vision that's clear about what happens next. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited about all of the amazing innovators and makers who are making up this space. I'm excited that there's a community that's dedicated to trying to get it right. You all are the hope for the future, not just of this country, but internationally. Please, please, please don't lose that hope. Make sure that we make that hope infectious. Do what you do and spread that. It's the best kind of thing that could go viral, especially right now. Um, thank you again for, for having me and I, I look forward to seeing the new future you guys are gonna bring into being.